What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with a quick Destiny 2 update as we do have the final game update for 2021. And this is a new patch that Bungie have put out today, update 3401, with a bunch of fixes and changes and things that Bungie wanted to get done before the end of the year because this will be the final patch until sometime in January. And it does include the change for dungeon loot, as well as a series of other fixes, activity stuff, more changes to strike some bosses, as well as various fixes and adjustments for rewards. So as always guys, I hope you find the video useful and if you do, a rating below really does help us out. But now let's get into it. And so it's not an absolutely massive update today, but there are some important fixes. And for the Grasp of Avarice dungeon initially, they say they fixed an issue where Grisprax's faction icon would not appear, but also fixed reward lockouts so that each encounter can be looted for rerolls an unlimited amount of times per week, as intended, and new items from the loot pool and power are gated to once per week per class. So essentially on the first run each week, we've got opportunities to earn stuff that we've never earned, as well, of course, as the power drops. But then on subsequent runs, you essentially get stuff that you've already earned from the dungeon. But of course, that means more opportunities at different roles on weapons and armor and stuff like that. So still a really good change, and definitely it'll be fun to jump in and farm the dungeon. But there are other fixes for Grasp of Avarice, including an activity crash in the Sunken Lair encounter when killing servitors. They prevented bad breadcrumbing, causing players to get stuck in a crystal pit after dropping down from the loot cave. But also players can no longer continue to generate cursed engrams during DPS. They fixed an issue with servitor bombs sometimes disappearing without explosion VFX when the timer runs out. A falsely advertised weekly challenge in the form of a pinnacle reward displaying when switching between classes and creating new characters. And they also fixed combatants that didn't despawn in the ogre and loot cave encounters, teammates not being able to be revived if killed by a trap on the starting platform of the Sparrow section, and they updated the pathfinding to prevent cursed engrams dropping by the Reaver Vandal from falling into the pit. So a whole bunch of changes and fixes there, and then for the Dares of Eternity, they fixed an issue where damage to aspects of Crota would sometimes not ramp up in line with the team buff counter, and an issue that allowed Vex Craniums to damage other players, and it was previously possible to actually kill your teammates with Vex Craniums. So no more trolling with those, and that takes us to Strikes, and for the Lake of Shadows, they say to bring this boss encounter more in line with other Strikes and our modern sandbox gameplay, Grask's health has been increased by 34% to a total of 134% of the previous value. And this means that he might last at least a minute or two against most fire teams now, even against the Galahorn. And so that health has been increased once again. And then they fixed an issue where if a player destroyed the second and third blights before the first one, a number of combatants wouldn't spawn. In addition to their normal behavior, they will now also spawn if you attempt to move up the alley, regardless of the status of the blights. So fixing a couple of cheesy bits there as well. And for the Scarlet Keep, they fixed an issue where the crystal to continue the strike was permanently invincible if players got to the wizard at the first stop of the elevator and killed it before the crystal could spawn. Next though, we've got gameplay and investment changes. And for weapons, they've added guaranteed drops of Dreaming City weapons from completing the Blind Well event. And they fixed an issue with Wish Ender that blocked ornaments being applied to it. And we even got some ability changes here as well. So the Hunters, Marksman and Gambler's dodges will now break projectile tracking in PVE modes. That should essentially make both of those dodges more valuable. They also fixed an issue where stasis crystals were damaging themselves while spawning, an issue where the magnetic and flux grenades were deleting themselves when impacting allies, and they'll now attach to allies and impact, and they fixed an issue where uncharged melee attacks were being suppressed for 1.5 seconds after the Winter's Wrath super ended. Plus, increase the size of the area that the cold snap grenade uses to find its initial target from 10 to 20 meters. Plus an additional issue where Penumbral Blast wasn't reliably creating Ice Flare Bolts if the impact or detonation damage killed the target outright. And so a few good adjustments there. And here we come to rewards. So they fixed an issue causing players to be able to claim the Resplendent Reward Package from Xur multiple times and across multiple characters. And so players who own the 30th Anniversary Pack will now earn the package the first time they complete the quest to the Daring Go the Spoils, and the package can't be claimed from Xur prior to being earned from the quest. But also for players who purchase the pack after completing the on-ramp can obtain the package from Xur in Eternity. On top of this, players can now reclaim the class-specific streetwear bundle packages if they get sent to the Postmaster, where they can potentially be deleted if the Postmaster becomes full. These packages can be reclaimed from Xur in Eternity if the Resplendent Reward package has been claimed, but the streetwear bundle package is not currently in the player's inventory. On top of this, players can now reclaim the Strange Key from Xur in Eternity if they dismantle it before using it as part of the Magnum Opus quest, and the Strange Key can be reclaimed by players who have already obtained it naturally, 
as long as they are on an appropriate step of the quest. And also they fixed the problem allowing players to earn rewards from the free chest into those treasure hoard without a treasure key. In general, they fixed a bug in text chat where multiple clan messages could be received all at once after re-enabling text chat. And for Forsaken Ciphers, exchanging them for Ascendant Shards at the Monument to Lost Light is now only available after players have already acquired Dungeon Forsaken Exotics. On top of that, the Monument to Lost Light now displays a waypoint if players have Forsaken Ciphers to pick up. And exchanging the Ciphers for Ascendant Shards now has a 4 second purchase timer to prevent accidental purchases. For Trials of Osiris, they fixed a problem where players were not placed into the flawless matchmaking pool upon achieving a flawless passage. That's an interesting one. And finally, for Bounties and Pursuits, they changed the Champion Kills objective of the Stasis Fragment quest Umbral Flames to require Champion Kills as a Stasis subclass, rather than Champion Kills with the Stasis element. And players who discard the Xenology quest per character will once again be able to reacquire it from Xur. So a mixed bag right there of primarily fixes, but... A few useful things like the farmable Dreaming City weapons, of course fixes for quests, and the ability to farm the dungeon, so let us know what you think about any of those patch adjustments below. A few things worth adding right here to finish, of course, the hotfix that we've got today as well as the TWAB will be the final updates from Bungie for the year. DMG points out that the next patch will be out after the new year unless something catastrophic happens. So the idea of the patch today was to hit the highest priority and impact bugs before going dark for the holidays. And otherwise Bungie will be quiet for the festive season and very first part of the new year. He also points out that for players who are asking, why can't I pick up the Dawning Oven and my alternate characters, that you can, and it's on the second page of Eva's inventory. This is also you need to masterwork it on your alternate characters as well. So also bear that in mind as well as some Bungie rewards right here. And so if you're signed up for Bungie rewards and have delivered a cookie to the Vanguard leader, Soakora and Zavala, you can claim a new emblem right here. So there is that one and also an emblem they added for the Grasp of Avarice, the one we spoke about a few weeks back, which was one they were allowing the community to vote for. If you've completed that dungeon, there is an additional Bungie Rewards emblem that can be claimed. So I'll link that down below, including if you want to sign up for Bungie Rewards. But if you are signed up for Twitch Prime Rewards, there are some new Destiny 2 ones, and they include the Cup of Tea Exotic Emote, as well as the Grateful Crane Exotic Sparrow, the Intrepid Exotic Ghost Shell, and the Technical Meltdown Legendary Ship. So those will also be linked down below on the Twitch Prime page. But for today, guys, that is what we have to round up inside of the video. So I hope this one has been useful as always. And if it has, definitely get subscribed to the channel so I can keep you posted with more content. But otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in. Very much looking forward to jumping in and farming the dungeon. But for now, thank you for watching the video. And I hope you guys have an awesome day.